we're going to uh, talk about this uh, example puzzle. Someone suggested to sort by the double letters. Ah, the double letters. Yes, it's pretty. It seems like this is our. This is definitely our sort key because we've got these letters D, E, F, G, H, I, all the way through Z, without any letters missing. Well, uh, well, A, B, and C are clearly missing, but everything else seems to be there. So, uh, but we haven't used these letters in parentheses yet. And another rule to remember when you're trying to solve these puzzles is that puzzle authors rarely, rarely add extra information to the puzzle that isn't useful to solving. So any information that is there and you haven't used is probably useful. So does anyone have any ideas what the letters and parentheses might be trying to tell us? If Go ahead and make guesses in the chat. Todd. Uh, yes, Maggie, Maggie suggested a little while ago, A through G is seven letters. So A could be the first letter. E would be the fifth letter. Ah, great job, Maggie. So uh, yes, so this is where I'm going to tell you that Maggie knows our, know this is the most common code that you're going to see in the mystery hunt is this code. A lot of puzzles will have codes, and some will have obscure ones. Some will have obvious ones. But this code is mapping the alphabet to numbers, where A is 1, B is 2, C is 3, and so on, all the way until Z is 26. This code is so basic and so common that puzzle solvers don't have any agreement on what this code is called. Some folks call it alphanumeric code. Some folks call it A equals one code. I've also heard it called A1Z26 code. But regardless, we can go ahead and put that in a column of the spreadsheet. Here we go. And uh, so the numbers range from one to seven and our answer words are all of length seven. So this is where we go into step three, index. So index means if you have a list of numbers um, and for every item in the list, try counting letters into each item by its number. So for example, you have, we have a five next to Freddy. So we take the fifth letter of Freddy's, which is a D. Uh, we have a four next to Galilee. So we take the fourth letter of Galilee, which is an I. So this is going to result in something like this. So the last step of ISIS is solve. Sometimes this step is easy. If you just have an answer, you can read. Now, it looks like we've got some messages here. Dion, Di, Dionysus, sus, that's very suspicious, as a fire. So, so it's somewhat readable, but it's not exactly a simple word or phrase here. And um, so this is probably not our solution, but it's too readable. It's, that's not a coincidence. So do we have any ideas from the audience, Todd, about what message this might be, this, miss, this is used for? There, people are getting close. We have Dionysus at the beginning and Glitter B at the end. Dionysus at the beginning and Glitter B at the end. Well, that's, that's kind of interesting. All right. Um, uh, all right. Any other ideas, interesting ideas coming from the chat, Todd? Um, still, still sort of working out, looks like. All right. Uh, Keith has asked, will this string be checkable? In a lot of puzzle hunts, you will check partial answers. Uh, often in the mystery hunt, though, it's an all or nothing. Is this the answer or not? Every now and then, uh, we did some small things last year in confirmation. But for the most part in the mystery hunt, you either have the answer or you get no help. All right. So uh, Zach says maybe the B at the end is just like in the clues. Ah, just like in the clues. Ah, so and this now is we have a, Kenneth saying Dionysus A, Sophia G, letter B. Yes. So this is what this aha is called recursion. And what it is, is that if you went through a process to get a message that's not the final answer, do the process again on that message. And here we have a hint for this. Or the title to our puzzle is again. So you're hinting that you're supposed to do it again. So if, you, if you, we have Dionysus with an A, then we have Sophia with a G, and we have Litter with a B. And so we can just go, and we remember that we have these blanks on the bottom. Remember the three blanks with the three parentheses there? So we can go ahead and fill that in and then 
we we can try to repeat this process. So, uh, Eddie, has anyone Googled these things or guess has guesses as to what these might be? Um, someone, uh, uh, I think it's Lynn, has said mm -hmm. Bacchus or Ian. I can't. I'm sorry, Bacchus. I don't, can't tell if that I. Uh, All right. We have that's Bacchus. It. We have Nygard. Nygard. Okay. I think that's some YouTube celebrity named Sophia Nygard. And litter. We have any good get any guesses for litter yet? Rubbish. Rubbish. How low right. I said. Okay. So let's go ahead and fill out the rest of the columns here. Well, we have some letters in the parentheses, A, G, and B. And the doubled letters are C, A, and B. There we go. And oh, those are our missing A, B, C things. That's great. And uh, uh, if we use A equals one code, one, seven, and two. OK. And uh, we could probably go ahead and sort that again. There we go. One, seven, and two. And we can get index here. Uh, Nygaard. Uh, let's see. Oh, sorry, GBA, 721. The seventh letter of Nygaard is D. The second letter of rubbish is U. And the first letter of Bacchus is B. And aha, we have D-U-B. That is a simple and short word, dub. And sort of rather appropriate to what we've been doing this. We've been doing things again. And so that's also sort of slightly confirmed by the puzzle title and the puzzle flavor text. So this is certainly our answer. For those of you who are new to this, you just got a lot of information dumped on you. And you might not have followed all of that. So fortunately for you, we took some notes here. So uh, we have these, uh, there's a URL here. We're going to go ahead and paste that into the chat. And we're going to take a short five to 10 minute Q&A for any questions that we have on this, uh, on this sample puzzle. Wait, while we have a very simple question, how do you submit an answer? Ah, well, that is the, the changes depending on from hunt to hunt. But almost always, it, is, it has never been true in my experience from being a hunter for 15 years that submitting an answer is a secret puzzle in and of itself. Almost all, there will always be a submit answer or check answer button somewhere on the page that has the puzzle. And you will just go ahead and uh, you would go ahead and just paste it there. So. Um, Ethan, Ethan asks how this puzzle compares in difficulty to a typical actual hunt puzzle. That's a good question. And the answer is that this particular puzzle was well, well be re will be on the easy side for most experienced players, mostly because it uses a lot of these existing motifs and tropes that the experienced players have seen. Uh, if you came out of it completely fresh without having seen these tropes, then it's about incomparable difficulty. So a lot of uh, puzzle solving comes from experience. So I would say that, you know, if you knew these tropes, this puzzle was probably about a two or three on a scale of 10. It's probably in the, you know, the, it's not the easiest puzzle you'll see because there's a lot of comp, there's still a lot of steps to go through. The easier puzzles will have fewer steps and fewer ahas. This one actually packed about three or four different ahas in it. Zachary is wondering if one puzzle is unsolvable until you have looked at another puzzle and solved it first. Uh, it is, most puzzles will be written so that they can be solved on their own. Uh, the exception are meta puzzles, which we are, Todd is going to talk about after this Q&A session. And, uh, and, and uh, sometimes there will be an artificial uh, gating where you won't have access to certain puzzles until you, uh, until you see later. I will po point out that it is fairly rare. Most puzzles are self-contained and all you need is the info on that puzzle itself. But every now and then there will be a wacky structure where you need data from other puzzles. Not necessarily the answers from one puzzle to the next that are sort of on the same wave, but you may need data from one to fill into the other. I've seen some wacky structures, but that's, that's pretty uncommon. You can usually expect that the puzzle is solvable just on the link for that page itself. Well, solvable except for external Googling for information well, of course. data, of course. It's very rare to have a puzzle that is completely solvable without looking anything up on the internet. Um, and maybe final question, Adam wants to know about, uh, let's see, are you generally working on one puzzle at a time? How linear is the solving experience? Uh, 
because the event is often handles teams that are very large, the largest teams can be up to like 200 players or even more. Uh, it is very unfun if you're a 200 person team to be all working on the same puzzle, especially if it's a puzzle of this sort of difficulty. Uh, so usually the designers of a hunt will try to design things so that there's stuff for people to do. Uh, there's a, I would say that you expect to have about maybe about five puzzles available at the beginning of the hunt and have that number sort of go up as you solve more puzzles. I would say that in the mid, at the midpoint of the hunt, there'll probably be about 15 to 20 puzzles available to solve at any time. Of course, some of those puzzles will be puzzles from early in the hunt that you're just stuck on because nobody has figured out the right way to get into it or done the research to get the solution. Uh, one more good question. I've never heard this asked. Uh, are there indicators of difficulty on puzzles? The mystery hunt usually does not give such indicators. Um, there are other hunts like the sums hunt or the mums hunt, which does try to give such indicators. And I've, I personally have always found those indicators sometimes to be very off base. And a lot of that is because how difficult these puzzles are, are sort of rarely about the actual grind work that goes into them, but about how hard, how off, how likely someone is to come up with the, aha, I know what this puzzle really is about. And that can vary quite a bit between teams and between players. Um, I will point out that uh, all things being equal, and maybe you're going to say this, puzzles in the first third of the hunt are generally generally simpler, generally easier uh, than puzzles you see in the middle of the hunt. And then often stuff at the end might be a little bit easier too because teams are getting tired and so forth. Yeah, that that that's right. And uh, when we're doing hunt design, we try very hard to like make this happen. We want to make it so that if uh, for teams that are just getting in who probably won't solve that many puzzles for the whole weekend, we want them to have puzzles that they can actually do. So a lot of the easier puzzles will go in the front. And uh, and at the end, when everyone's tired, uh, that's where we'll, we'll have some easy puzzles near the end. But also sometimes like the really big intricate puzzles that we think only a few people will really appreciate because it'll be about some niche hobby those can often also get pushed to the push near the rear of the hunt. So there's a lot of different strategies in how you're designing where the puzzles should go in hunts. 